This video is on volumes, the disk, and washer methods. Um, previously, we've used integration to evaluate areas of regions. Now we will explore ways that integration can be used to find volumes of solids formed by rotating a region about some given straight line. If a region in a plane is revolved about a line, the resulting solid is a solid of revolution and the line is called the axis of revolution. The simplest such solid is a right cylin circular cylinder or disk, which is formed by revolving a rectangle about an axis adjacent to one side of the rectangle. For example, consider the region R, bounded by the x-axis, the y-axis, and x plus 3y equal to 6. Now imagine rotating region R about the y-axis 360 degrees, and the solid formed will be a cone. To find the volume of the cone, we could simply use the formula from geometry, volume is equal to 1 third pi r squared times h, which would give us a result of 24 pi. But instead, let's explore the idea of a strip sliced through the region and revolved around the y-axis. Remember that x would represent the coordinate of some point p on the graph, and as such is also the length of our strip. When the strip is rotated or revolved around the y-axis, it forms a thin disk. And the volume for such disk would be pi x squared uh, times dy. So the cone can be created by an infinite number of thin horizontal slices or strips whose sum will create the cone. So let's do an example. Write the volume of the cone as an integral on the interval from 0 to 2, then find the volume of the cone. We would have our limit. We know that volume is pi x squared dy, but in this case, x is our function in terms of y. And our function was x plus 3y equal to 6. So x is equal to 6 minus 3y. So we have the integral from 0 to 2 of pi 6 minus 3y squared dy. <clears throat> Foil, pull out uh, pi, and we get uh, 36 minus 36y plus 9y squared dy. Integrate, we get pi, <clears throat> 36y minus 18y squared plus 3y cubed, and it's evaluated from 0 to 2. Uh, using the fundamental theorem of calculus and simplifying, this would give us a volume of 24 pi. When finding volumes of a solid of revolution, it's important to focus on what's happening to it each individual strip or disk as it is rotated around a line instead of thinking about the total volume. A thin slice or strip can be horizontal or vertical. The volume of a disk sliced vertically is given by the following formula. Um, v is equal to pi capital R squared W, where capital R is the radius of the disk and W is the width. With a horizontal axis of revolution, you solve for y in terms of x, and you would use this. Um, your limits are your x values. R is your function in terms of x. If it's a vertical axis of revolution, then you solve for x in terms of y. You would use this function here. Your limits here are your y values, and your function is uh, in terms of y, and this should say dy. Let's look at another example. Um, we're asked to set up and evaluate the integral that gives the volume of the solid by revolving the region about the x-axis. So if we draw a little arrow here, it lets us know which way we're going to revolve our solid. Well, we have y equals negative x plus 1. We know it has a y-intercept of 1. It's a straight line with a negative slope. We know that it crosses the y-axis at 0, 1, crosses the x-axis at 1, 0. Okay, so since we're going um, 
in a horizontal over a horizontal axis of revolution, we're gonna go along our x values from zero to one pi negative x plus one squared dx. Foil, pull out pi, so you'll have pi from zero to one of x squared minus two x plus one dx integrate. So pi x cubed over three minus x squared plus x, evaluate it from zero to one. That would give us pi one third minus one plus one, which would then become um, give us a volume of pi thirds. For example three, um, we're actually going to skip this example for now because it would have a hole in the graph or in our uh, solid of revolution and that would require us to use the washer method which we haven't introduced yet. So let's skip that one for now. Let's look at example four. y is equal to x squared and we want to revolve it around the y axis. So now it's a vertical axis of revolution so we need to solve for x. Uh, from 0 to 4. So we've got our parabola. Um, we know that this point here is negative 2, 4. We know that this point out here is positive 2, 4. And they asked us to just f um, rotate our solid of our solid over uh, the interval from 0 to 4, but if we look at our parabola, <clears throat> it's symmetrical on both sides, which is the reason why they only asked us to rotate it around this region, because this volume would be exactly the same. And we could just multiply um, the volume we got here by 2. So let's do that. Um, <clears throat> first, we need to solve y is equal to x squared for x. So x would equal the square root of y. And since now we're in terms of in terms of a, a y function, we're going to be using our y values for our limit. So v will equal, I'm going to automatically pull out pi. Uh, from 0 to 4. Mm, remember that it'll be two of these. So it'll be 2 pi from 0 to 4 of our function, which we have to be the square root of y squared dy. Simplifying this and integrating would give us v is equal to 2 pi the integral from 0 to 4 of y dy. 2 pi would be y squared over 2. Evaluate it from 0 to 4. Um, I apologize, we don't need this 2 here. We would need the 2 if we were looking at it over a horizontal axis of revolution. But since it's vertical, it's already taken care of. Um, substituting in our values, we would get a volume of 8 pi. And for our last example on disk method, we have y is equal to e to the x. We want to be revolved around the x-axis uh, from 0 to 2. So, we're going to go from 0 to 2, pull out the pi, e to the x, dx, e to the x squared, dx, um, which would then give us pi from 0 to 2 of e to the 2x, dx. Using u substitution to integrate, we'd get pi of e to the 2x over 2, 
evaluate it from 0 to 2, and this would give us approximately uh, 84.192. Mrs. 